where the magic happens with the first bank at Dodge City, that's where we left off. Okay, we talked about once upon a time Dodge City didn't have a bank, now Dodge City does have a bank. Banks have to do th two things. Those two things are take deposits and make loans. There are some institutions that only take deposits. They're not banks. There are some institutions that only make loans. Don't take deposits. They're not blanks. But a commercial bank, by definition, takes deposit and makes, and makes loans. So we're going to talk about, does anybody have a calculator here? We can use a different set of numbers that are in the text if you want, if you have a calculator. Otherwise, I'll just make things go quicker if we just, whatever page is that, Ron? 271, we can probably just use whatever's in the book, page 271, just to make it go fast and we'll know what the numbers are. So we said that there was a, for the sake of simplicity in our illustration, the kind of money that was in Dodge City were silver dollars, physical silver dollars. So the kind of deposits that went into the first bank of Dodge City were silver dollars. So if we take the deposits, the deposits, if we could get everybody in Dodge City to play the game of you put your money into the bank, your silver dollars into the bank, now you get a passbook savings thing that says how many dollars you put into the bank. And if you ever want your silver dollars back, you can go into the bank and you can draw them out and they'll reduce what's in your account. Okay. And so we have deposits of, is it 10,000 class? 10,000 silver dollars into the first bank of Dodge City. Now, every banker knows that you've got this pile of silver dollars here, gold coins or whatever, and every, most people have their money in the bank because they want to keep it there for safekeeping, but sometimes they need transactions, they're going to go on a vacation or something, or somebody doesn't really needs cash for some reason. So they go to the bank in the morning, they pull out some cash, they go do their transactions, they pay it to the local retailer or something, they get their goods and go home. And then at the end of the day, what does that retailer do with all those silver dollars that they got from that day's sales? They take them and put them right back in the bank. So the top, let's say 20%, the top 20%, of these silver dollars get all the wear and tear. They go out in the morning, come back at night, out in the morning, back at night, out in the morning, back at night. And we know that we have to have 20% of all these silver dollars on hand at all times just for ordinary business because people put their money in the bank and they expect it to get it back upon demand. That's why we call it demand deposits. So if we have 20% on reserve at all times you all remember the technical name for that? Required reserves. It's required. If you don't have that money there, they're going to say, well, what do you mean you don't have my money? I put it in here for safekeeping. You're supposed to give it back to me on demand. That's what a demand deposit is. I demand to see my money. Okay. So 20% class, do the math. Quickly. That's right, I think, yep. So these are required deposits. Now, if we're going to keep this in the vault, these 2,000 silver dollars in the vault at all times, then what can we do with the other 80%? Loan it out. Now, because they are, in addition to the 20% that's required, we call this excess. Excess of what? Excess of our 20% required reserves. It's excess. It is the excess reserves that we can take and we can loan out at interest. And this is where the magic of fractional reserve banking happens. It's so magical that when, you, if you don't know about it and it's explained to you, you go, nah, that's not really the way it is. You got to be kidding me. No, that's, it's kind of that kind of astonishing wow value here. So 
next step is, since we know we have to have this 20% for in and out purposes, we could take this money here that just sits here collecting dust. It's not doing anybody any good, supposedly. So why don't we loan it out? Well, let's say we took, we got the deposits. Now the next thing we do, we have, we've got to, we got to make some loans here because that's the way banks make money when we make loans. So who could we get to borrow our money? Well, let's just take a trip through town, through Dodge City here. And as we go down through Dodge City, we notice there's a blacksmith shop here and uh, all the cowboys come through and they drive their cattle through and uh, they got to put their horse someplace, and get it fed and taken care of while they go to the saloon and, and liquidate all their assets they made from being on the on the trail for so long, and so they have to pay the, the, the blacksmith to, to take care of their horses and, and stable their horses and feed their horses and reshoe their horses and all that sort of stuff. And he's got a thriving business because when the cattle come through, you got to take care of the horses. And you're saying, you go up to the blacksmith and you say, Mr. Blacksmith, I'm the new banker in town. I just want to come by and I just, I just want to thank you for your faith in our bank. And we got a nice vault there, and I, I appreciate you being one of our good customers. And um, we look forward to, to, to making your money, not just work for you, but work for the community. And that way, when it works for the community, then we'll be able to pay you interest on some money that you put into the bank. And, and speaking of that, uh, banks do two things. They take deposits and they make loans, and you've got quite an operation going here. Uh, you, you got a big old barn there, and you got a bunch of hay sitting out over there. You even got some horses hooked up to the outside. How come those horses aren't? Oh, you don't have enough room for all your horses to get them in there. And, and you know, when you got the hay out like that, you know, you got to take this big mound of hay and you have it like this, so when the rain comes down, it hits the outside hay and goes the goes to the outside there, so the only top part of the hay gets wet and damaged because um, it's a haystack there. You know, if, if you had a bigger barn, you could put that hay inside your barn and you wouldn't be losing like the top 20% of it. Oh, you say it takes more money to do that. Well, that's, that's just the reason that, that I wanted to establish a bank in this town because um, you've been here a long time. You've got a good reputation, you're a hard-working person, you're just the kind of person that, that we would be interested in loaning money to. And so if, if you increase the size of your barn here and you made it big enough that you could store hay for the winter so it doesn't get wet, and you could take those horses out there and you could bring them inside, because you can charge more if you keep the horse inside than outside, right? Well, then you could make money. You'd save money on your hay. You could take you take care of business better, and the, and the cowboys would be happy. Their horse is not outside. And you, you, you if we if we loaned you eight thousand dollars, could you put that to good use? Could could you make money if we loaned you that much amount of money? Yeah, they could. I really do. Well, I tell you what, Mr. Blacksmith, um, why don't you come down? If you think you could, and if you you're you're the expert here, and I, all we know is you've got a really good reputation. That's 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 one of the characteristics of making good loans. That people are credible. They don't steal. They honor their word. They're hardworking people. They're proof. They've got a proven work history, and you're one of the best upstanding citizens we have. And so, if you say that you could make that eight thousand dollars work for you and the community and make us all healthier, wealthier, and wise, then why don't you come down tomorrow noon and uh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll, I'll have the paperwork here and we're going to loan you $8,000. And so I'll put, uh, let's see, but now we're going to need collateral. We're going to collateral because it's the community's money. It's not just the bank's money, it's the community's money. They put it in there, so we got, we got to protect the community. So I don't think this would ever happen, but we got we got to be extra sure here. When you come in, you're, we're, we're going to take the deed for your ranch, and we're going to use it as collateral for the loan. Because I, this is not going to happen to you, but if it ever did, if you just took this money and ran and just go and leave everything behind because of a divorce or something like that, then the bank would be allowed to take your ranch and sell your ranch in order to get the money back so that the people don't lose their money that put their money into the bank. That's that's we, we, We've got to treat everybody the same, and so that's the way we've got to do it. And I don't think that's going to be a problem because it doesn't look like you're going anyplace. You've got deep roots around here. But we're going to have to put your ranch up as collateral for this $8,000 loan and, 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 and your 
your your uh, blacksmith shop as well. And I'll go through the quarter, county recorders and I'll get that all taken care of there. We'll have that all written up there. And so come around about tomorrow noon and, and we'll just ink the deal and we'll just loan you the $8,000. So tomorrow noon, he comes in. Good to see you again. Um, I'm really happy to make this loan to you. I think it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for the community. Um, here's, here's, here's the loan document. And uh, here's the $8,000 that we're going to be loaning you, Mr. Blacksmith. And here's the list of the property that's going to be up for collateral. And here's the terms and conditions. Here's the interest rate that you'll be charged on this. Um, and if that's all okay, uh, you sign it here, and then I'll sign it here. And let, let, me, go, let me go get your, your, your money here. <clears throat> so the banker goes into the back, to the vault, opens up the vault, puts 8000 Silver dollars, eight bags of $1,000 each. <coughs> One, two. Have you ever picked up a bag of $1,000 silver? It's heavy. It's not, you drop it on your foot, and you know you dropped something on your foot. It's like six. Seven, eight. Okay, there's your eight thousand dollars. You sign there. I sign here, and I, and I put this in my portfolio. This now becomes your liability. I gave you the eight thousand dollars. You're giving me a promise that you're going to pay it back plus interest. So for the bank, that is an asset. The loans that people owe to the bank is a bank's asset. So if you're talking about being a member of the bank executive or something, you're either going to be in asset management or liability management because banks do two things. They take deposits and make loans. And when we put money into the bank, that's a bank's liability they owe that back but when the bank issues a loan that loan is the bank's asset that's how they make money so if you see the big billboards a uh, bank with such and such we've got 250 million dollars in banking assets does that mean that they've got that that they own no that means that that's how much money people owe them as a banking asset Okay, so I got the, I put this in the portfolio of the bank's assets, and now we've got a performing asset here that's going to make us money because you're going to be paying us interest here, and there's your 8,000 silver dollars. And, hey, it's been really good doing business with you, and I, I just wish you the best success, and the whole community is looking forward to great and wonderful things here. And um, <clears throat> uh, did, you, did you bring a buckboard to – I mean, you can – I can barely carry one of these things by myself. Did you bring eight guys to carry each bag with you, or you got a buckboard or something that, to take this? You didn't. <clears throat> um, well, that leads me to think it's probably not a good idea to put eight thousand dollars in the back of your buckboard and take it to your house anyway because somebody's going to see you taking eight thousand dollars to your house and, i mean you might want to leave your house sometime to go on a vacation or go to church or a pta meeting or something and you're always going to be thinking oh i got a lot of cash sitting at home it's kind because if i lose it i got collapse i lose my i lose my my ranch i lose my business i, I don't want to lose um I got an idea for you, Mr. Blacksmith. Uh, if you like, you know, rather than take your $8,000 and put it down in your basement and spend it out to build your barn and all your stuff, you know what you could do? You could just you, you get out your passbook savings and, and I'll, I'll mark down $8,000 in your passbook savings and then we'll take your $8,000 and I'll put them back in the vault for safekeeping. And then you don't have to cart at home. If you need any of these silver dollars, you just come in, you bring your passport, and you you want to pull out three, four, five thousand dollars because you you got to pay for equipment and stuff. Sure, come in here and 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 you could just pull out your passbook savings, right? 
don't, don't, I think that's a better idea. I mean, it's your, it's your money. We loaned it to you. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'd suggest that you put it back in there. Well, yeah, that does sound like a better idea. I, I think we're going to do that. That's when the, what I just told you right now, that's the magic. I, if, it, if it went like this, it's okay. That was the magic. That right there was the magic. And we'll pick up next time, next session, on what is this magic you're talking I think I see the magic, but I'm not sure I see the magic. But let's expand on that magic in the next session.